Hey. Hey. So hey, I hope you gorgeous people are having a fabulous day today. So, I was abused by a transphobe about three days ago and I haven't had a chance to see my therapist yet, so I'm gonna do the healthy thing and air it out on YouTube. Now what's really put my brain into a pickle is after this happened, I didn't react the way I thought I would. Like, I'll get into it, but basically, after I was abused, I came straight home and I just, I don't know. I thought I'd be over this sort of thing by now. I thought like I had such a thick skin where, you know, someone being transphobic towards me wouldn't get to me, you know, but here I am. I guess I'm not invincible. Just to give you guys a little bit of context, I've been looking after a friend of mine who has a son. The son is the one that abused me. And what I've been doing is I've basically been checking up on him on a daily basis just to make sure he's okay because his son is a drug addict. So I've just been ringing up, like I don't know if any of you guys have ever dealt with anybody that is an addict. I haven't actually dealt with somebody in person. I've heard stories about it, but I've never actually seen the sort of damage um, they put their loved ones and families through. And what I've really learned is that there's really nothing you can do when somebody's going through a situation like this, except like lend an ear and kind of let them vent to you because I don't know, there's no sort of advice you can give somebody I, that I know of anyway. I've never, again, I've never dealt with this firsthand. So what happened is I was over there and I was helping my friend out and then his son, who's the addict, wanted me to give him a lift somewhere. And my friend stepped in and was like, no, Chloe's not driving you anyway. She lives on the other side of town. And then his son turns around and called me a fucking tranny. Um, said something about, fuck, it's so hard for me to say. I'm still like embarrassed to say this. Um, but he said, <laughs> it's just so cringy. So he's using the wrong pronouns and he turned around and said to my friend, you just want to suck his dick. And then like, I can't even repeat the rest of it. It was just like full on. And then he confronted me, like he stepped up to me and my friend ended up getting in between us. I just feel like my face is going red just telling this story, <laughs> fuck. But I don't know why I feel so embarrassed about, like, or shame telling this. Like, I shouldn't. This wasn't a reflection on me. It was a reflection on his son. And I guess his son's not even in his right mind because I'm pretty sure it's, like, meth that he's addicted to. And, you know, I was, like, telling myself all of this. And basically, as soon as that happened and, you know, he, he like came up to me closer anyway and like said all those horrible things I just pretended I was okay like my friend of course was like Chloe you're all right like I'm really sorry that happened and I was like yeah I'm fine like because I just wanted my friend to be okay I didn't want him to be worrying about me and I just like brushed it off and I guess the thing is I thought that I would be fine because like I deal with hate like a lot especially uploading these YouTube videos I get like people calling me a man calling me like all sorts of things online but what the difference is that one if I'm feeling sensitive on YouTube I'll just stop checking any of my comments and then I'll circle back to them in a couple of days when I'm feeling better and number two when somebody like says something to your face it's just like, it's really jarring. And this is kind of where I reacted differently to what I thought. Like I just came straight home. I came straight into the room that I'm sitting in, sat right on this chair and I didn't move for the rest of the day. Like it was just bizarre. And then I started feeling really pissed off because so first of all, I was feeling really disgusting and dirty and maybe even a little bit of shame about me because I haven't been confronted like that for years and years like in person so I kind of forgot what it was like and then I was then I went to the confusion stage where I was just like why am I so affected by this like again it's not a reflection on me it's a reflection on the person they're just a transphobic prick and then I went to the anger stage where I was like how dare this person make me feel like this I want to drive over there and kick his fucking shins in and I didn't end up driving over there and kicking his shins in, even though I wanted to, 
because I realized that he'd probably bash my head in if I tried to do that. So I listened to the um, sensible part of my brain. I think what I've learned from this is that you shouldn't ever really get to the stage where you're just used to being abused, whether it's for like you being trans or whatever, like, it shouldn't ever become a norm. Like I was kind of thinking in my brain that, you know, I was pissed off at myself because I just, it wasn't just like water off a duck's back. Like I actually took, took it to heart, even though I was trying really hard not to. And I really let it like ruin my whole day, just that abuse. And I was thinking about it. Like I've been thinking about it ever since. So, it did get to me and I think that's okay. I don't need to feel, you know, angry at myself. Like I haven't progressed enough in my transition. Cause I always look at like parts of my transition as like progress, you know, and I just feel like I'm over six years, like since I started transitioning, maybe seven years actually. Yeah. And I just felt like, you know, that shouldn't bother me now. And perhaps it bothered me more because I haven't had that in person. It was just really jarring. But regardless, it's, it's not something that should ever become the norm. And also, at the end of the day, there's always going to be people out there that they just want to hate something as well. I mean, not even talking about this case because, you know, he's on drugs. You know, if somebody's on drugs, they might say things that they would later regret. And I would hope that that is something that he would regret if he became sober. But who, who knows? Like, I don't actually know this guy. I just know his father. And his father knows that I'm trans. And he's obviously disclosed that to his son. And I certainly don't want to, like, come on here and make out that, like, my life or what I deal with is worse than anybody else's. Because I feel like you know, I'm pretty lucky to not have to go through this all the time. But when something like this happens, and it hasn't happened for a while, you realise that you've forgotten what it was like in the early days when, you know, maybe you weren't as possible and people would just like yell things out from driving cars or, you know, you'd kind of get on like a tram and everyone would like stare at you. And I mean, that's not abuse, but it's just like, you kind of just feel like the circus just turned up. And that was the kind of general feeling that I guess I had, like I was like some sort of shit show. And it made me remember that sort of feeling that I used to go through. And I was really able to reflect on that and how it's been such a long time. But I guess the only positive thing, and I'm really reaching here, is that, you know, I'm lucky that this hasn't happened to me more often. And maybe I should just be grateful that it is like kind of a jarring sort of thing. And I should also be grateful that he's given me more material for my therapist and my YouTube channel. So, you know, I'll be able to speak about this for a whole hour with my therapist. And by the way, I really don't want this to be like, you know, it's not me coming on here and being like, poor me, my life's really shit. Because it really isn't. Like, I have a really good life. And I just feel like, I feel kind of guilty sometimes when I come on here and I talk about shitty things that have happened in my life or are happening because I always know somebody's got it worse. I guess that's always the case. Somebody always has it worse than you. But... I just feel bad, especially because, you know, trans women get bashed and stuff like that. And, you know, even this guy was confrontational. He didn't hit me. So I, I feel, I don't know why. I just feel like a little bit guilty sometimes when I'm like venting my spleen about crappy things that I've gone through. And I just don't want it to take away from what other people are going through. I don't know if that's even making sense. And most of my reason for uploading these types of videos is kind of to share them with other trans girls who, you know, they might be struggling. That's th This is always what I envision in my head is like I'm kind of telling a trans girl this because I just feel like it's good to, you know, share the crappy things because we see like, you know, trans girls on TV or on social media and it looks like they've got it all and I think it's kind of good to share these crappy situations just so then they know that they're not alone, like they're not the only person going through it. That's like my reasoning when I put out most of these types of videos. It's not for people to feel sorry for me. But yeah, that's all I really got to say about that situation. I've had to be as vague as possible because I don't want people to know who I'm talking about in real life. Not that I think that anybody would be able to find out, but yeah. 
I hope all of you are doing really well and staying safe. And if you haven't liked this video already, maybe think about hitting that like button and subscribe with the bell on. I would love that. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. All right, bye.